Hi, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at a typical uh, three and a half digit or 6,000 count multimeter and see how accurate these things are out of the box by getting not just one of them, but by getting a whole bunch of them. And I just so happen to have a whole bunch of these new EEV blog meters here in the lab. And before I ship them out, I thought I would just hook them up to my uh, reference generator here and see how close they are on various ranges across a whole spread of multimeters. Granted, they are all part of the same shipment. They're all cali manufactured at the same time on the same run. They were all calibrated at the same time. But that's the interesting point. How close can a typical factory calibration on a meter like this actually be? Is it does plus minus one least significant digit? Is it half its spec? You know, this is like 0.3% uh, uh, DC volts uh, typical, which actually gives a reasonably uh, wide spec in terms of counts, plus there's the number of uh, counts as well. I've done a video on this explaining that sort of thing. And how close is it to its absolute, uh, you know, to an absolute reference standard? So I thought we'd get like 50 odd multimeters or so and actually measure them. And I'll go through, I won't bore you with all the details, but I'll actually take uh, as many multimeters as I've got here, all from the same batch, and actually measure them on various ranges, see if we can get the data could be interesting. Let's go. Hey, check this out. Look, amazing. Symmetrical multimeter stacking, just like the Philadelphia mass turbulence of 1984. Unbelievable. No human could stack multimeters like this. So if we actually have a look at the specs of a typical three and a half digit multimeter like this, I say three and a half digits, it's actually uh, 6,000 count. I've done a whole video on that, which I might have to link in here if you haven't uh, seen it. That explains uh, counts, resolution and counts and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, typically for the DC voltage range here, uh, for the 60 millivolts through to 6 volt, we're looking at 0.3% plus two digits there. So that's actually 0.3% uh, of the actual reading and that'll tell you over here on the electrical specs is given as plus minus a percentage of the reading plus number of digits. So if we actually have a look at that, the meter could actually read and still be within spec. Let's say you had, uh, you're measuring five volts on the six volt range, for example, just with the plus minus 0.3% accuracy figure, it could read anywhere from uh, 4.985 volts to 5.015 volts and still be within spec for a precise five volt input. And that's not taking into account the extra, the plus two digits here, which you have to add on to the least significant digit over here. And so it could display anywhere between that figure, but how close is it actually gonna be? Not just on one meter, because that really doesn't tell you much. Uh, <laughs> it effectively doesn't tell you anything. You've only got one data point. But if we can get, say, 50 multimeters or something, then, hey, that can give us a good indication. I've never actually done this on a bulk lot of meters. But of course, a meter like this is actually or should be actually uh, calibrated at the factory. It's actually software adjusted, so they will uh, feed in the uh, the reference uh, voltage generator into here and actually uh, program the exact figure in there, or that's what they should do. In, back in the old days, they'd eh, get their tongue at the right angle and eh, 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 tweak a little pot inside, but modern multis, multimeters like this one don't have pots. They're all uh, software configurable. So when you measure five volts, it should be spot on. In theory, of course, but of course this changes with the temperature and, you know, age and other characteristics. So it'll be interesting to measure a whole bunch of these and see what we get. But of course, as with any measurement system like this, even if it's bang on, as I like to say, and we feed in 5.0000 volts, which I'm capable of doing with my lab gear here, uh, a precisely known value, it could still be plus minus one digit here. And you always expect that from the converter. That's just inherent in the uh, converter itself. So, yeah, you know, if it's 5.001, for example, uh, you wouldn't worry about that. Into You would say that they're all bang on. When, when you start talking 0.002 or 0.003 or something like that, then you can start saying, yeah, it, it's starting to be uh, different to the other meters. Oh, but still, it's, it's definitely going to be within spec. I know that for sure.
So what I'm going to use is my Advantest R6142 programmable uh, voltage and current generator so we can do DC voltage and DC current. I also have an AC voltage uh, generator, I have a resistance standard so I'll try and do um, as much as, I won't do all the ranges, um, obviously this thing can only go up to like uh, you know 10, 11 volts maximum I think it is. Um, so you know, can't, I'm not going to test like the 1000 volt range but hey, anyway I won't go quite to full scale, this is a 6000 count meter, I'll drop it back by one and just give a nice familiar uh, voltage reading of five volts here and yes I've let it warmed up and I've confirmed it with my uh, Keithley meter above it and other stuff so no drama let's uh, plug this puppy in and see what we get but I won't bore you with all the details of all the rest of them bang 5.000 but as I said I, there we go 0.001, right? Not concerned. Plus minus one least significant digit. So I'm going to see how close they all are. I pretty much expect them all to be within a couple of least significant digits because that's effectively what this uh, plus digit on the end is saying. They're, you know, fairly confident that it's going to be the exact figure they calibrated it at plus two digits, basically. So, you know, I expect it to be within that. It's 20 four degrees, uh, no sorry, 20, sorry, 22 degrees here in the lab and you know it would have been similar temperature to what they calibrated that so I expect them all to be pretty darn close like that. It could actually be a really incredibly boring result, sorry, ahead of time, in fact I think it will be. Hmm, well that's a few multimeters, 40 to be precise. I can't explain it but there's something very therapeutic about doing this. Oh yeah. So I've got my handy banana plug lead, here I go, oh goodness, the things I do. Now let's repeat that same thing but with uh, 50 millivolts, so I've changed to the millivolt range here and we are, you know, 50 millivolts is quite low so, you know, not all multimeters have a 50 millivolt range but hey, let's have a look, this one's bang on, 50.00, ah, 50.00, jeez, liking the millivolt range, anyway I am recording all these, actually the millivolt range so far is ridiculously ridiculously spot on. So I think what they must be doing is calibrating the millivolt range and uh, relying on the resistor divider uh, to get the other ranges. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's getting, it's got, it, it dropped down. There's a little bit of excess charge there. So these are all spot on 50.00. This is insane. So yeah, this is just, uh, this is crazy business. So that's what they must be doing. That's why we saw some uh, variation on the readings before, 499, 497, from basically 4, uh, 4.997 up to 4.5, uh, basically. So uh, just some tolerance on the uh, resistor divider. But these are all, jeez, that's ridiculously bang on. That's just crazy. Oh, oh, is that one one least significant digit out? Oh, no. And now for the resistance standard, I'm using my uh, Wecom Precision uh, reference standard. If you have to ask the price, you can't afford it. So yeah, I don't think we're going to question the accuracy. 9.99, let's go. Now, of course, one of the problems with a 10K standard on a 60K uh, range is that, well, you know, you only got uh, two decimal places here. So, you know, I expect it to be like, and it is, it's like 999998 at worst. They're all going to be, yep, there we go, 10. Well, that came in not too bad from 998 up to uh, 1000. Now it's time for current. So I'm going to use uh, 50 milliamps and, well, this one's bang on 50. So let's, uh, let's start there. Here we go. Oh, goodness. I'm going this way and then back that way for those who are playing along at home. 49.99. Here we go. 49.99. Oh boy.
Well, that current is a very crazy tight uh, spec. The only one was uh, 999, uh, down here. So, but only a, a two, um, sorry, three least significant digit uh, spread there. Very tight on current. Okay, one last thing I'm going to check is uh, AC because that's not typically uh, tested. So I've actually got an AC voltage standard here, an EDC, um, just like my EDC uh, DC uh, reference standard up here, which is the best standard I had in the lab. I didn't need to use that uh, for today's purposes because we're not, uh, we're only looking at a 0.3% uh, class instrument. Anyway, this AC voltage standard, I forget the spec, but it's more than good enough. I set it for 5.00000 volts at uh, 60 hertz. Um, so that's, I believe, smack bang in the middle of its uh, most accurate uh, range. So 5 volts, let's give it a burl. Currently getting uh, 5.002 and I have uh, actually confirmed it up here. And I've given it a little bit of a tweak to be uh, closer there. I've turned some uh, averaging on. And I won't bore you with the time lapse of all these, but uh, I ex probably expect... Oh, Helps if I um, have to go select all the ranges. Um, I'm not going to use the uh, the uh, VFD, which is the variable frequency drive, which is the uh, kit, which is the filter in there. As you can see, it doesn't get the uh, resolution. So hey, that one's bang on. So why bore you with another time lapse? Well, I was actually quite surprised by the AC spec here. It was really tight. I mean, the highest was five double o three up there and there, but most of them were pretty almost bang on you know 5001 or uh, 5000 spot on and uh, the spec by the way for um, AC range uh, 50 to 60 hertz is the uh, tightest response it's 0.7% uh, plus three digits so it's easily well it's within well actually yes it's within no four digits it's within the four digits, uh, let alone the 0.7%. So balls in it in. So there you go. That's the final data table uh, for this thing. Just some spot checking on various uh, ranges here. And it is, as you can see, it was well within the spec of this thing, um, which was, oh, by the way, the resistance um, spec there was uh, typically not point. Uh, 3%, oh, there we go, yeah, uh, actually on the 10k range it uh, up to 0.5% uh, plus three digits, but you can see, you know, it did pretty darn well because they uh, calibrate these things, not necessarily on every range, as I said, I actually haven't asked uh, Bryman what they actually how they actually calibrate this thing but as you can see the the best range by far was the 50 millivolt one and also it'd be the same for the 500 millivolt one too i would think because what they're doing is they're calibrating it on the millivolt scale and that's very typical and then uh, actually relying on the resistor divider to do the rest so that's why you know when you start getting up to the 5 volt range a little bit out um i was very impressed by the current Actually, that was uh, really, uh, the spread on that was really good. And the AC, very surprising as well. I would have expected a larger spread on the AC, but didn't see it at all. So I'm actually quite impressed by this. But this is typical of even, uh, you know, relatively low cost meters like this one, because they do have um, software uh, calibration and I'm too lazy to go in there and, uh, you know, put this data into a spreadsheet and, you know, maybe get some bin in and things like that. It's, there's not enough spread in there really to get a huge amount of useful uh, data. All we want is the min-max uh, spread on each one. You can calculate the percentage. It's much better than the specs. That's all we care about. So they can actually uh, software calibrate these things, I believe, but I'm not sure of their exact uh, procedure. I can't find a uh, cow, like a, some meters have like a cow menu when you, uh, you know, hold a button down and uh, turn them on, for example. So I'm not sure of the uh, procedure for this one or whether or not they're just relying upon a uh, the voltage reference, which I believe is inside the uh, chipset for this one, and the um, and the precision of the resistor networks that they uh, plug into these things. Whether or not they do individual cal on each one, I don't know. As like um, manufacturers, different manufacturers are going to be different. Different models are going to be different. All that sort of stuff on how they calibrate them. Actually, that wasn't a really fair test with the uh, 10k resistor here because it was, as I mentioned, it was much lower down in the range. So the error becomes a greater percentage uh, because purely from the ADC count, the resolution. So uh, what I've got is my um, uh, IE. Uh, decade resistance box here. It's not a standard 
standard as such, but I'm able to uh, select 50k so we can use the same order as before and bam, I've uh, tweaked it until it's good enough. So I'll repeat that. And there we go, we actually got a bigger uh, spread on the actual number of digits. We got no a differential of 9 between the highest and the lowest number, 9 least significant digits. But because it's much higher in the range when you calculate the percentage, it's a lower percentage, uh, or i.e., you know, a tighter tolerance than what we got for the uh, 10k one here. Purely because we're uh, closer to full scale on the 60k range than we were with the 10k resistor also on the same 60k range. And just for kicks for all you UNI-T fanboys out there, I'll just try my uh, UT61E. And, uh, hmm, 49.84K. Yeah, not that terrific, is it? Is that within spec? Hmm, 0.32%. Hmm, yeah, I think it I actually it probably is just within spec, is it? And that same 50 millivolt uh, range we were bang on here with before. Ooh, <laughs> I might have drifted by 0.1 millivolts. Um, yeah, we're a little bit low there, but uh, still within spec, I believe. But yeah, significantly different. Anyway, a sample size of one. And I would show you my Fluke 17B, but I kid you not, it has failed. And no, it's not the contact on the banana plugs. I've tried the probes which come with it, shorted out. It does nothing. What the? And it doesn't even read the millivolts either. It's absolutely useless. It's dead. <laughs> Maybe a repair video. And just for kicks, there's the older uh, Bryman BM257. Oh, look, half a bee's dick up. And of course, the venerable Fluke 87 is bang on. Well, I'm telling you what, here's another Uni T, and uh, hmm, not too good at all. But as you can see, well within the quoted spec, and that's not unusual uh, these days. It was different back in the day with the eh, 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 tweaking the uh, pots in the things. But, you know, usually even your cheaper multimeters are pretty good these days. So anyway, hope you found that interesting. I just thought I had these meters. I've never really had a chance to do this. So, hey, why the hell not? Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up, discuss it down below, all that sort of jazz. You want to support me, Patreon links down below. I've got a new EEV blog newsletter you can sign up to. Uh, by the way, if you wanted to know about this meter, people on the newsletter and uh, Patreon uh, and supporters, they actually found about this and it's um, currently practically sold out. So sorry, there's not going to be another batch until uh, April, is it? Yes. Hmm. Catch you next time.